two frogs fall into a well, but the well is so deep that they can't manage to get out of there by themselves. And so they start to cry out for help. Very soon, all the frogs in the forest have heard their cries for help. They've come, they've gathered around the well. But when they look down, they realize that not only is the well very deep, but also the walls on the side are so steep and so slippery that no one can actually help the frogs from down there to come up. And so they actually start to call down to the frogs in the bottom of the well and say, we can't help you. Nobody can help you. There's no way of you managing to come up there. You may as well give up all hope and just die where you are. Forget trying to use your strength to come up. Just die where you are. One of the frogs hears what they're saying and he gets so disheartened that he actually dies where he is. The other frog, however, is a little bit hard of hearing and he thinks that they're trying to encourage him. And so using all of his strength, he manages to haul himself out of the well. Now, the lesson from that story is a very obvious one, that it is entirely our decision what we allow into our lives, that we choose whether we only allow the positive things to come into our life or we let the negativity creep in as well. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. It's never as simple as that because in real life, everything comes into your life and then you have to use all of your energy, all of your strength, all of your courage to eradicate the negative and throw it out. And unfortunately, even that most of the time does not work. Even if you use up all of your energy, all of your strength, you cannot actually make it work for you. And that's when you start to get really disheartened. That's when you feel that you can't ever climb out that well and you just want to give up. So a few years ago, someone introduced me to a philosophy called the quintessentia. You've heard the word quintessential. It comes from two Greek words, quinta, essentia, which basically means the fifth distillation. So in ancient times, when the alchemists would bring herbs and plants to boil them down to um, extract medicine from them, what they would do is they would boil them down and then they would distill the essence of the plant. But that first essence that was distilled was not used as medicine. That wasn't considered good enough. It had to be repeated several times over, five times to be exact, because they said that only at the fifth distillation would you get the real life force, the real essence of the plant. That would be proper medicine. In real life, the philosophy simply means that when you come across an issue, when you come across a problem, that the first time of trying to solve it is not going to necessarily work. You have to do something over and over again before you become skilled at it, before you can actually do it properly. Unfortunately, when you're feeling disheartened, when you're feeling low, it's a lesson that's very easily forgotten. And so from today's story, the real lesson that I want you to walk away with is the philosophy of the Quinta Essentia, the philosophy of the fifth distillation. I want you to remind yourself that the first time that you do something in order to overcome an issue or an, or an obstacle, the first time that you do something and it doesn't work, it's not because you failed. It's not because you are a failure. It's not because you are incapable of doing it. It's just that it's the first distillation and the first distillation is not the perfect one. You have to keep going till you get to the point where it works for you and it will. Keep going till you succeed at what you are trying to do and you will climb out of that well.